Hi there, welcome to Adventure Airsoft. Today we're going to be talking about my long term weapon, the Tipman Carbine M4. So if you've not seen uh, my Tipman Carbine M4, you know there's a couple of videos that are going to be flying through this, um, flying through this video. Um, I've had it for about a year now, uh, bought it because I wanted to get into HPA, uh, pretty much after I sort of rebooted Airsoft and uh, it was sort of a bit of a breath of fresh air really. I got it for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the price. Uh, so the price just changed from about 500 quid for the gun to 460-ish uh, for the, the gun, a tank, and a line. So for me, that's sort of like a you know you you, you you've got everything you need to do to uh, to get going there, which is really appealing. The other thing that was really appealing for me is that when they've designed this weapon, it comes with a lot of things that are. You know, really essential to not only the maintenance of it, but also the, the thought process they put into it. So, I love the fact that it's all you know, it, um, it its functionality functions very similar to uh, an actual M4. So you've got a bolt carrier group in there, you've got a bolt assembly, you've got everything that works and comes apart like an M4, which is great. Um, I also love the fact that it doesn't have any electronics in there, so. One, there's nothing to charge, but there's nothing to go wrong with electronics either. Because all the regulator, uh, all the regulation for the air is done in the low receiver. Now, there's a couple of pros and cons about um, all that, which we'll get on to in a moment. But generally, I've loved the consistency of the weapon. Um, a lot of people have been on forums saying that, you know, those are inconsistent or they need to change this, they need to change that, they need to change... Personally, I've changed next to nothing, actually, and nothing on the weapon whatsoever, apart from spraying it took the plunge um, which took literally 15 minutes so I'm not uh, I'm not one of those sprayers that, uh, that tends to make it into a, a work of art make it exact and perfect uh, from my experience it doesn't need to be exact and perfect they're the ones that actually people can see far easier um, in concealment so oh yeah just quick spray 15 minutes couple of lines jobs, jobs are good what I love about this is the construction so you've got I mean the stock, everyone complains about the stock being, you know, cheap and nasty, but a stock is a stock to me, you know, we're not, we're not firing a wheel weapon system here, you don't need a stock to be what it's, what, it, what it's used for an actual weapon, you're not driving it into your shoulder, okay, uh, and making it comfortable, it doesn't need to be comfortable, you can fire these weapons one handed and pretty much hit the same target, um, so let's not worry about the stocks, okay, um, got a re real uh, recoil buffer tube because of the working parts that do their job, they used double-sided uh, swing mounts on there, you know, uh, sling mounts, sorry. That's, um, yeah, that's great. Some don't come with that, which we'll go on to in a second. Um, the charging handle actually works as a charging handle. Um, and you can only, yeah, you have to charge it to fire the weapon system, which is really, really cool, which is nice. Um, it's not an ambidextrous fire selector, but you can put them on, not a problem. The trigger is sort of... Very, very similar to sort of in, uh, the characteristics of a real weapon system. Like you've got take up, and then you've got your shot. So, yeah, very good, like that. Uh, the upper and lower receivers, then they are uh, they are metal. Um, you've got the pistol grip, which is polymer, which is a you know a nice shaped polymer. You can change it out, but personally, I liked it. Um, just put a bit of tape around it for me to um, put a bit of uh, sorry fabric tape around it, just so the gloves have got something to grip onto. I'm just look at that now. There we go. Moving slightly forward, then I use a quite a cheap site. You know, it's nothing, nothing that's special. It's about 15, 20 quid, but it does the job. Been shot out, but I put a, a little bit of Lexan on there. I just keep a spare bit of Lexan with me. You know, it's uh, it seems to keep zero, even with this the kick of this weapon. It seems to work fine. Uh, the other thing, this is a personal touch uh, for all you Tipman spotters out there. You'll notice that uh, I've got this little wheel here, uh, so that's a personal touch from me. Um, I do a bit of 3D printing. That, that is the top dead centre hop adjuster, which is normally an Allen key, but I've trimmed a bit of Allen key off, made my own hop wheel. Uh, so literally, as you as you fire, and if you need to adjust your hop, you just turn it quite easily. Just a little turn, a little turn. You can make really small increments with it rather than getting an Allen key out and then going for it and dropping the Allen key and whatever. It just becomes a, a mess. But yeah, that's a, that's a permanent fix for that problem. Not, not a problem, but uh, to make things better. I love the front rail. For me, a lot of rails out there tend to be quite 
large and this is quite a quite a narrow light rail so the outer barrel is metal uh, but the rail system is all polymer so that's quite light so it keeps all the weight quite far back of the gun so when you're there and you can drive it into your shoulder um, and you can you know for example my, my hands fit I can fit overlap my hand around it which is great so when I put a torch on there so you can see on you know some of the videos that uh, you know you can use your torch on there I've got a made my own grip so I've messed around making my own uh, foregrips and stuff like that which is currently not fitted on here because normally I carry a torch on this side and then a grip on the bottom so it's all quite easy to uh, to sort of manhandle it around quite light quite maneuverable and because of that you haven't got that weight further forward you can just like go around corners change arms fantastic really good to to use for that which I loved I love it to bits it's uh, it's been really good um, and I'm begrudged getting rid of it actually um, I'm getting rid of it because I'm not a collector if I've got one weapon system I tend to use that one um, for its for its jobs and I want to sort of branch out into something a bit different so not getting rid of it because I don't like it I like everything about it I love the kick the nice little kick the nice little reminder every time you fire around that it's uh, it's doing a job uh, it's doing a function that's quite that's quite nice mm. new mug yeah, there you go. Anyway, um, yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. And an automatic. I believe you can have a shot on. A, you, can, you can see this VVD now on automatic, and it's just immense. Really, really good. Good fun. Sound of the biz. Uh, I've seen a few guys make them really quiet as well. Um, the only other thing that's, that's annoying is in the box you don't get velocity lock. In the box you get a normal pin, rear mounting pin, which is uh, sorry, a rear. You know, uh, I mean, call it, call it a TMH pin, trigger trigger mechanism housing pin. That's the yes, it's a term there, but uh, yeah, so uh, rear TMH, you get a standard pin, but most sites, near you know, fact, nearly every site, a bit, every site I've been to with it, I've wanted a velocity lock, as in uh, what you can see there, a couple of cable ties on it, so you can't mess around with it during pre games and stuff. Even though, for you to change the uh, FPS or the rate of fire on this, it takes longer than it would be, I think, to do a quick change, quick spring change on a AEG, because um, I've seen the guy do that in like six seconds. So, anyway, whatever, whatever, uh, just one of those things. But yeah, it's really, really functional um, for what they've included with it. Uh, another thing I've added, I've had a little tail, mainly because the standard uh, nipple that you get that just comes to about there on it, with the line, because you end up, it ends up being bent like that all the time, it ends up like damaging the nipple um, and quite, it, didn't, it never leaked, but it just looked damaged quite quickly. So I decided to change that for a tail. Normally, out of a game, if I'm playing all day, I'll get, uh, I'll have a full tank, 3000 PSI, and that will go down to about 1000 PSI on the full day. Um, I'll probably fire around, oh, I'd probably say two, between two and 3000 rounds, something like that. Maybe about 2000, maybe slightly less. So because of the weight uses the gas to do the recoil in it, you use a little more, it's like get hair not gas, air, you use a little bit more air than is expected, which is, uh, which is not great, but um, you, you just feel like it's doing something, you know, and you have to think a little bit more about, uh, I wouldn't say marksmanship principles, but you have to think a little bit more about what you're doing, because that that inertia, that um, uh, that recoil, you know, does have an effect if you're firing a few rounds, you've got to kind of hold it steady and stuff. And you can increase that as well by putting a washer in the buffer tube. Uh, there's a spring in the buffer tube. You can, if you pack it out with a metal washer, you can increase the ferocity, uh, ferocity uh, of the uh, recoil, which is great, but it also means that it shakes the weapon to pieces eventually. Let's quickly talk reliability. So reliability-wise, I've had absolutely nothing go wrong with this whatsoever. You strip and clean it like any other weapon system, like any other... In fact, let's, uh, let's strip it. Like any other gun. Um, still got my tags on for Airsoft Festival here and one from the local site so yeah normally either they'll put a, a, a little tag on a little tag a little cable tie on coloured cable tie for their site or you'll allow you to put one on which again it's, it's put there doesn't really matter really because if you're putting one on yourself then you can just adjust it put the same put a different cable tie on with the same colour on you know makes no makes no odds anyway so if you uh, if you do have a uh, Tipman Uh, if you do have a tipman 
um, and you don't get a velocity lock. And for some reason, there was, there was quite a, like a world shortage of velocity locks for it. Locking pin, that is. So you can see it splits just like an M4, like a lot of lot of them do. I mean, there's a lot of AGs that split like this as well, which is not a problem, you know. But you can remove front mounting pin, and there you go. There's your there's your M4. So there's your buffer. You can see that buffer tube. You've got your buffer plate there, and behind that you've got a spring, bit of grease on it. So what's interesting here is that all of the mechanics of how this weapon works is a lot. Of, it's housed here and in the top section of the upper there. This bottom one here, the black one that you can see, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, the black one there, you put an Allen key in the top of that and you make really small increments uh, and that is your rate of fire. So after the rate of fire, then once you're happy with the rate of fire, now you can, you know, it, it doesn't change the rate of fire up to you know, AEG sort of levels, but it, uh, you can go either quite slow or quite fast. It's quite, you know, it's, uh, it, it is quite adjustable. And then in your upper receiver here, you have got, there you go, you've got another Allen key hole right there, which then controls uh, your FPS. And again, really small increments um, on that to change your FPS. And again, you can dial it in pretty much exact. You know, so where SMAGs, you can't, you can't like tweak that. Good thing about HPAs, you can dial it almost bang on what you want to be shooting. I know a lot of people have turned these into DMRs, and it's been, there's some fantastic DMRs out there for these, really, really are, you know. But they're quite modular, obviously take all the M4 bits and pieces that you want to put on there. People have put some crazy stops and stuff on, and some crazy suppressors and that kind of stuff. But as you can see, quite modular. A couple of guys, you can buy these for about 120 quid for the upper receiver. Not complete, I think you need to buy the outer barrel and stuff. But you can buy a shorter one. Um, I know some people that have bought a, bought a longer one, a 14 inch one chopped it down so it's like a really small one or kept it as a DMR and then another really small carbine one just to go around a bit of CQB and stuff. And all you do is just interchange it and jobs good and it's already set for the FPS you want. All in all then, I have a quick round up. That is my M4 Tipman and that is the M4 Tipman I've been using for the last year. It's a fantastic bit of kit. I would thoroughly recommend people buying one and having a go. Probably not a V1, but a version two like this. Um, you know, 460 pound out there is pretty cheap for what the gun can offer you, uh, offer you back. And there's amazing forums out there on social media, the, the guys that own these and uh, can make tweaks to them and help you make find spare parts and stuff. Generally, maintenance wise, if you strip it like a real gun, oil it up like a real gun, and then uh, keep it you know, lubricated and stuff, it'll work. You know, guys have had run 10,000 rounds without touching it through, not a problem. Uh, I've probably ran about uh, 15 or 20,000 rounds through it and it's been absolutely flawless. So thoroughly recommend it. Uh, out of 10 then, for me, this gun was a nine out of 10. Loved everything about it until I decided to sell it. So that'll be the next couple of videos. So uh, on the replacements, so stay tuned. Please subscribe and support the channel. If you wanna see anything in particular, please put it in the comments below. Uh, if you've got any gripes, again, put them in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up and uh, Follow the links to some of the other videos we've got coming up, uh, so we've got released, and then we've got also loads more content coming up, so please support that. Um, hopefully you have a, a good time, and uh, that's it for me. Cake Eaters, out.